This video is entitled Adding Images to Your Page, and it's a companion piece to the book, so you want to learn to use HTML and CSS Chapter 2. This is Part A of, of Chapter 2's videos. I'm James Imbrano, PhD, and I'll be taking you through this uh, brief presentation. In this video, I'm going to cover four of the common types of, of images used on websites, and I'm going to show you the IMG or image tag, and that allows your HTML page to go get an image in another file and include it into your HTML page, into your web browser page. On web pages, you'll see pictures um, embedded throughout your web pages. It makes them look really great. There are four general types or file types of images used on most web pages. You've got to be sure that whatever image type you're using is compatible with just about every browser. And these four types are compatible with, with a vast majority of all web browsers so that the page will be displayed correctly. The first is a file called a GIF file. You'll see them with a .gif format extension on the end of their file names. Um, they're small. They can have up to 256 colors, and they can include animations. You'll see them on Facebook and other things with the little animations. Those are, are GIFs, GIF files, um, graphic interchange files. They're really great for logos or other symbols. And they can even have transparency, which allows you to see through the image, see a hole through the image. There's another type of image, and the type that I use for most things, and that is the ping, the portable network graphics. The ping graphic format allows for up to 16 million colors. It allows for transparency, and it is what's called a lossless compression, which means that if you take an image and you compress it into the ping format, and you then later uncompress it, you've lost no information about that picture. The decompression is exactly the same as the compression, um, which, which is nice for, again, um, logos and charts and graphs and that type of stuff. Now, for pictures, we will most often use the JPG or JPEG um, format. The JPEG format is published by the Joint Photographics Expert Group, and it's a lossy compression. So if you take a picture and you crop it and shrink it and save it as a JPEG, then if you ever want to uncompress it, do something with it, you're going to lose a little bit of the picture information. It, it becomes lossy. So be sure that you save your original big picture before you shrink it and save it shrink it and save it under a new name so that if you ever need to shrink it to a different size, you can uh, go back to your image that hasn't had the loss, hasn't had the uh, details lost. So a JPEG. You can see how they each have their own purpose. GIFs are great for logos and animations. Pings are good for charts and graphs and things. JPEGs are great for photographs. Um, and, and images of that sort. And the last type of shape that you'll see are SVG files, or Scalable Vector Graphics files. SVG files are strange because they're not really image files. They're XML, which is a type of computer language that contains rules for where lines are and where colors are and, and the shapes of the shapes and the, and the way lines are connected and the text and the fonts and the, and the heights and, and the relations of everything. And the great thing about an SVG is that if you include an SVG in your website, whether it's tiny or it's huge, it takes up the same amount of space, and it's rendered by the web browser, so it's always exact. Um, there are a few web browsers that, that don't like SVGs, but um, SVGs are also great for clip art, line art, um, that kind of thing, because you can scale them as big or as small as you want. So, how do we get an image into our HTML page? We do that using the IMG tag or the 
image tag is, as that's what IMG is short for. In the image tag, we have IMG, and there are two attributes that must be included. The SRC attribute, which defines the source of the image or where the image is located, and ALT, A-L-T, which stands for the alternate text. Um, so the source is the file name. So if it's in the same folder as your HTML file, you just put the file name there between the quotes after SRC. Um, if it's in another folder, you put the folder name slash. If it's on another server, you put the fully qualified URL of the, of the source of that image. Um, be sure to put the extension dot whatever dot JPEG dot GIF dot uh, PNG. Be sure your extension is there. Also, be very careful to make sure that they're upper and lower cased exactly the same way they are on your computer, because some web servers are case dependent, and uh, your images won't show up if you don't have them typed in exactly the same. The alt alt attribute is also required. You must have an alt on every image. And what you do is you put in a description of what the image is. You do that so that people who are using a browser that can't see the images or so that people who, who are visually impaired or visually um, don't have the visual acuity can still say, well, there's a block there that contains a picture of blah, blah, blah. So it's like, oh, well, I know what a picture of a... So if it was image source secretariat dot JPEG, alt would be um, prize winning or triple crown winning horse. Okay, so you would know that secretariat, so that you'd know that that was a picture of a horse. Um, if the alt is not important, if the image is kind of one of those things, eh, it really doesn't matter if you see it or not. It really doesn't have any bearing to the page. You, it's just there for decoration. You can leave the alt empty by just saying, quote, quote, with nothing between the quotes. But the alt is still required on the image tag. So here we can see a page with an image. And uh, in the HTML over here, you can see that the image tag has been highlighted so that you can see where it is. The picture is called clouds.jpg, and you can see that it has the alt text of beautiful clouds. Um, you see in the document, it follows the format we talked about in uh, video 1B with the doc type, the HTML, the head, the title. Um, notice that the paragraph of text includes where this image was gotten from so that uh, another human could go find it. You know, you're, I'm following uh, standards of practice here to attribute where I get things and, and whose work I'm, I'm using. So you can see that, uh, and you can see up above uh, the representation of what this page might look like in your web browser the picture and the text with the heading above it and the text below it. This concludes video 2A. Um, this presentation is copyright 2020 by James Imrino, PhD. Mm -hmm. um, you can contact me at jim at renejm.com if you have any questions about this presentation. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike, 4.0 international license, and I would like to say Thank you for watching.